So you want to get good at factions. Whether you're brand new, coming back after a long time, or you've struggled a long time with surviving, there are certainly some things you should be doing to get better. But there are certainly many, many things you also need to stop doing immediately. Stop. Stop it. Dr. Poop Love here, and today we're going to go over five things to stop doing now if you want to get better at The Last of Us Factions. And stick around to the end because my final tip is going to subvert your expectations harder than The Last of Us Part 2 ever did. But let's get right into it. My first tip for you is to stop running out of spawn. Okay, so I don't mean right at the start of a game. You should run then. And also, I don't want to be one of those people that says you should never run, because I think there are plenty of cases where running can be an effective strategy. But I see way too many people blindly running out of their spawn after every death, and it's got to stop. First of all, this isn't Call of Duty, you poops. But also, you are taking away a critical element that can help you when spawning back in, and that is the element of surprise. Sure, it may be obvious to some enemies where you might spawn, but most aren't really going to be that wise, and so you can really use this to your advantage. Positioning is so important in this game, and it can be critical to a win. So if you're able to advance further along the map, undetected, you can get into a much better spot for map control. Also, you should be considering other teammates who may be trying to flank. When you run, you're blowing their cover. So please, please just think twice before running straight out of spawn. All right, let's move on to the next one. And that is to stop relying on crutch perks and weapons. One of the biggest obstacles to success that I see is players are too reliant on crutches, which can really hurt your growth. And I'm guilty of this too. I'm very reliant on Sharpshooter 3, for instance, and I, I tend to be really bad without it. But there are certain strategies that you can use to be effective when you don't have something like Sharpshooter equipped, such as pop shooting. And that would open up five whole points that I could use somewhere else. Other examples I see are players that use covert as a crutch, or camping, or shotguns, or the burst rifle. And the thing is, while these can all be effective, you're not challenging yourself by putting these perks aside and trying to do well without these things. I think some people are really afraid that they will do poorly without their sacred crutch. And yeah, you probably will at first, but you're never gonna get better if you don't challenge yourself because you're never gonna expand your abilities by doing the same exact thing every single game. The amount of level 999s I see in this game camping with a shotgun every single match, like clockwork, it, it, it makes me so sad because you know that these people have played so many games in order to get to that level. But to realize that they never actually took the time to actually get good, to actually be able to expand their abilities and be versatile and effective with anything, it's really sad. So don't be like them. And can I just say that recording the footage for this part of this video, it was really making me sick. But. Let's move on to the next one, and that is to stop caring about the scoreboard. Yes, I'm being serious. Too many people are afraid of what the scoreboard is going to say that, again, similar to my last point, they're just too afraid to challenge themselves. But you're never really going to be able to branch out from an okay average performance to an above average or excellent performance unless you take some risks and see how they pan out and how they work for you. And the pressure that you can put on yourself to see a good score can actually backfire and make you play even worse. This game is very much a mental game just as much as it can be a skill-based game. And one thing I see a lot of is people caring so much about the score that they just go ahead and quit the game. and. Not only is this harmful for your team, but also by doing this, you're not challenging yourself to actually try to figure out a way to come back from the brink in a challenging scenario. And the other thing you have to remember is that the value you bring to your team might not always be in getting the most kills 
or doing things that might get you the best score. For instance, in my early days, when I couldn't aim for poop, I used to stay at the back of my team and watch our team's flank. I didn't get a lot of kills because I wasn't in the main action, but I would find and kill the flanker who otherwise would have wiped out our entire team. In many ways, this allowed us to win, but my score wasn't really anything to brag about. My next tip for you is to stop being predictable. One thing I have learned in playing this game is that predictable enemies are the easiest to kill because once you realize what they're going to do, you can predict it and beat them every time. For instance, someone who flanks the same way every time. They might wipe us out at first if we aren't careful, but once you catch on, you know to expect them and can wreck them. A better strategy is to be unpredictable. Mix up which direction you might go, or mix up which type of juking or dodging technique you might use. Be aggressive in one instance and slow down and support the team in the next. Not only does this variety make you a much more versatile player, but it makes it harder for the enemy to be able to read you and thus be able to figure out a formula for success against you. And now let's subvert some expectations with my next tip, and that is to stop listening to these tips. Okay, yeah, I'm being a bit facetious here, but actually what I mean is that there are exceptions to every tip or rule. Yeah, there are times that running out of spawn is the best strategy. Yeah, your crutches are a good thing to rely on sometimes, especially when you get in a grudge match. Sure, you should pay some attention to the scoreboard, like when you're dying 10 times in a match, you should probably change something. And yeah, sometimes even predictable strategies are unbeatable. And so, yeah, to really get good, you need to be able to tell the difference between when to rely on some of these tips and when to throw them out the window. It takes a lot of time, but with a little practice, you will get there in understanding how to pick and choose. But of course, with all these things that you should stop doing, there are many things that you need to start doing if you wanna survive and thrive in this game. So you should check out this video to understand what some of those are. But otherwise, so long, pooper troopers.